it's flu season, everybody. And this 2018 flu season is particularly deadly. Up to date, it's been accountable for 93 deaths in children. Doesn't it seem that with each season, the virus finds yet another way to infect more people? While I was researching how the flu virus has changed over time, one thing I was amazed to learn is that one sneaky trick that the flu virus has up its sleeve is its ability to change how sociable you are. You see, unlike more stable diseases, the flu virus is unique in the way that it's constantly morphing into ever so slightly different forms in order to avoid our annual vaccine. After all, that's the reason why we need an annual vaccine in the first place, to meet the challenges and changes that each new strain of the flu virus presents. Now, if you really thought about it, it would sort of make sense that the ultimate goal of the flu virus is to plant itself into as many human bodies as possible. Indeed, the multiple studies have shown that in order to do this, the flu virus will actually manipulate immune responses in the human brain in order to spread itself. So put in more simple terms, the flu virus can actually influence how, social, how sociable you are. So, what do these social interactions even look like? Well, just imagine how you feel when you're a little more talkative than usual. You feel buzzing, happy. Um, that's exactly how you would feel upon first being exposed to the flu virus. You feel more of this desire to go out and hang out with your friends on a Friday night when you normally wouldn't have. Or you feel like you would probably go to a party when, again, you normally wouldn't have. And that's what the flu virus is doing to you. Now, um, in a study conducted by biologists at UC Berkeley, they tried to see the effects of parasites on the social behavior of mice. And now, before you guys stop me, um, I just want to say that I do recognize that flu viruses are different from parasites. But at the same time, they're not too different. Both parasites and flu viruses use a human or animal host in order to spread itself. So with that being said, this is how the lab setup kind of looked like. Um, on one end of the enclosure, we have a mouse. And it was kind of a shoebox kind of deal. Um, and then on the other end of the enclosure, you will have a sample of bobcat urine. So a normal mouse sensing the presence of a cat urine will scurry to the far end of the enclosure. But a mouse infected with this brain parasite will actually dally dangerously close near the target area, suggesting that something had fundamentally changed within the brain chemistry of the mice, making them somehow lose their inherent fear of cats. Now, the reason why I bring up this last example of parasites and mice is because there are parallels between parasites and mice and then flu viruses in people. In a study published in the Annals of Epidemiology by a team of researchers, they collected data from 36 normal, perfectly healthy adults. And these participants had just walked into the doctor's office, received a flu vaccination, and had agreed to simply participate in this study, making it a perfect setup for this experiment, given that it would be sort of unethical to just give someone influenza for the sake of this um, lab experiment. But anyways, given this perfect lab setup, the researchers asked each participant to record the number of social interactions that they had in the first two days before receiving the flu vaccination, and then compare that number to the number of social interactions they had following the flu vaccination. The results were astonishing. During the uh, two-day period before the vaccination, the 36 participants averaged a total number of 54 social interactions. That number nearly doubled to 99 social interactions, suggesting that something had totally changed within the humans, instilling in them a desire to go out more, to talk more, all going back to that idea of that tiny little exposure of the flu virus within them. Now, just to clarify as I close off, um, the science on the flu virus and the sociality connection is still in its very early stages. We're not quite sure the exact mechanisms of how this occurs within our body. 
but nonetheless, it points to very important questions regarding the relationships between health, disease, and social behavior. And if you think about it, it's pretty amazing that the little things inside of us could have such big effects on the outside and how we interact with the world. With all of this being said, make sure that you guys take preventative measures during this deadly flu season, like cough or sneeze into your elbow, wash your hands under hot water, and avoid all social interactions if you think that you've been exposed to any bit of the flu virus. Stay healthy and thank you.